What's up, guys? Welcome back to Brown's Phone Breakdown. Uh, luckily, um, you know, my privilege here to be joined by Brendan Leister. He's going to jump in with us, um, talk about what the Browns are doing with Jannard Avery this year, highlight some things that he does well, how they're using him in different sub packages, that sort of stuff. Um, he's going to give you a, a really good perspective on things um, from an offensive coordinator standpoint. Also can touch on it from what the defense might be thinking. Brendan, how you doing today, man? Doing great, man. How about yourself? Can't complain. We're in here bright and early in the lab. I don't think many other people are putting in this kind of work. <laughs> yeah, man. It's good to be here. I'm excited. Good, good. good. All right. So let's jump in. So so um, the big thing that you're going to notice this year, if you guys are watching the Browns defense, is a little bit of a tweak to what they traditionally run in their 4-3. Um, this what's called a joker personnel. I was telling Brendan that I, I kind of came across the name from multiple camp visits where the Browns are running Avery in um, off the sideline and screaming joker. And this is the, 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 the typical set that they're running with two stand up edge players. Typically, you're going to see with the first team defense all year, you're going to see Miles Garrett and you're going to see Jannard Avery off the opposite edge. Um, you know, touch on that, Brendan. What, what do you think are some advantages of, of having those two guys in two points off the edge like that? Well, it gives them the ability to, you know, easily rush the passer or drop into coverage. We've seen that a few times in the first couple of games where, you know, Miles Garrett drops out. They send a couple linebackers on blitzes and and it kind of can confuse the, the offensive line and the protection scheme. You know, Miles Garrett's a great pass rusher, so they expect him to be rushing every play. So when he drops out and they might have two guys accounting for him, then those guys have to shoot their eyes immediately somewhere else. It can just cause confusion up front. Same thing with uh, with Jannard Avery, because at this point, I think he has a chance to be a very good pass rusher, even though he's a fifth round pick. So um, I think it just gives you versatility with those guys. And it also gives them a little better vision, too, than, than they would have when they're in a three point stance. Um, they can see a little more when it comes to coverage responsibilities, um, just seeing the whole field. When you're standing up, you have a much better perspective on the field than you do when you're in a three point stance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think a big part of Jannard's game, you know, for those of us who have, who have looked into what he did at Memphis was, um, yeah, he was an interior linebacker uh, uh, quite a bit, but they also brought him off the edge in that stand-up position. I think um, I think he was the leading pass rusher efficiency from the linebacker position last year. I could be wrong about that, but at least at least top three. Um, so, you know, that's that's it's pretty smart of Greg Williams to get him in, the, you know, involved in the mix with the first team and something he does well. As you guys see, we go through these clips. He does a really nice job with the dip bend, run off the edge, tackle struggle, kind of keeping with him because he's running so low to the ground. So we'll jump in. Um, so th this is this is the first play um, that he sees the field third and 11. They will typically run this joker for uh, personnel grouping uh, third downs, third and longs. Um, I haven't really seen them use it third and short. They did in the first series use it here. The second series they went, um, you know, predominantly the entire series was in Joker. So that was interesting to see. Um, I think Greg Williams wants to get a, a feel for how, how successful it's going to be. But uh, yeah, third down situation. Um, Bills are in what looks like 11. They have Charles Clay here uh, in the slot. Uh, you know, so it's still two trips. So the Browns are going to adjust. And, and, and let's, let's, let's dive in and take a look see what we see here. So we're going to highlight Avery for you every play. Okay. So, talk to me about what he's doing here, Brendan. Yeah, so they're obviously showing pressure off the off the edge where it looks like he's coming initially. Yep. He drops out. He walls off number three up the seam. And why is that? Why is that so important? Explain that to people, especially with regard to how they they played in pass coverage last year. Yeah. So last year they didn't do that enough. You know, I know that you mentioned that. I mentioned that last year, some some critiques of the defense. And so this disrupts the pass game, the timing of the short passing game. And and it just really disrupts the routes. It forces uh, receivers to adjust the route. You can see that this guy has to come off the hash. Initially, he's running up the hash. He has to come off the hash. Avery forces him to. So that disrupts the timing of the offense. And with the two inside linebackers both coming on a pressure on the right side, the defensive line is stunning inside that really just causes chaos you know hopefully they're they're hoping to move McCarron off to the right he slides up in the pocket and then he takes off because of the pressure and because of the fact that Avery disrupted the short passing game um, you can see Avery does a great job of dropping underneath that route really getting in McCarron's vision you can see it right around here yep and then when McCarron takes off and and he also has help you can see uh, I think that was Peppers yeah no that was Tamarius Randall, yeah, yep. right back here. 
Uh, he he also was underneath that route at the end. But yeah, Avery, yeah. he starts pursuing the quarterback, shot out of a cannon and pursued. I mean, you can see he's a great athlete. Chases him down, gets him out of bounds. That's how you get off the field on third down. And you'll see here, we, we, we kind of cut in some replays too. The Browns do bring two two linebackers off the right side. And Brenda made a good point about walling off, why that's important. If, if Clay gets an inside release there, you guys will see if we uh, – went back to that last screen, you guys would see that the middle of the field's wide open. So walling off number three is, is ridiculously important. You'll see just how quick um, Avery comes into your screen here on the right side, closing speed. That's what we want to see. I mean, a lot of people correlate him to like a mini James Harrison. If you remember James Harrison's game, that guy was all hustle all the time. Yeah, he played with brute strength, but 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 he was hustling, you know, everywhere everywhere across the field, sideline to sideline, he was making plays and, 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 and a, a big part of his game was speed that people didn't talk about. So back into uh, so next series, this is the second series. So the Bills are in 21 uh, personnel. Uh, they're gonna have a fullback to his side and a tight end to Avery's side here. Um, you know, some of these plays guys, these snaps are just, he's not gonna make a huge impact, but we're just looking at how he fits. So, um, you know, it's, it's the, the, the Explain, I guess, the, the good part here is they're going to put – it seems like they're going to put Avery um, to, to the, you know, the offense's right side and, and keep Miles away. And, and, and I'm sure, Brendan, will, you, can, you can elaborate on why, um, you know, coordinators have a tendency to align things to their right side just because people are right, right-minded in general. Um, but, yeah, what, I mean, what do you have at the top of the screen that, that makes it so important? You know, it's – Yeah, so I think what's interesting with the way that the Browns play with their defensive line a lot is, is a good amount they'll bring Derek Kindred down to the line of scrimmage, and he'll set the edge. So he'll play D-gap a lot outside of a tight end. So he's really responsible for, you know, setting the edge, sending the run back inside. And what they'll do is they put him outside Emmanuel Ogba a lot of times. And Ogba was one of the best run defenders in the NFL last year as a defensive end. Mm -hmm. So what Ogba would do is he'd be responsible for the C gap a lot of times. And, you know, traditional defensive ends in a 4-3, a lot of times they're responsible for playing outside the outside the tight end and setting the edge. But in uh, Greg Williams' defense, he likes to have a player – you know, he likes to have that defensive end you can slide into the C gap. And then on the opposite side, the other guy kind of plays the D gap and sets the edge. That's what Miles Garrett would be doing on this play. Yeah. So what I've noticed with Jannard Avery so far is they've been trying to do some of those creative things with him at the line of scrimmage as well, kind of like they do with Kindred, where it's another player that they feel comfortable with putting on the line of scrimmage, asking him to set the edge, but then also feeling comfortable with uh, asking him to spike inside to the C gap as well, you know, do like gap exchange with the linebacker where the linebacker slices over the top and re responsible for the D gap. So you can do a lot of different things with these versatile athletes that they have up front. Yeah, agreed. And, and you guys will see, like Brendan was talking about, whether it's Derek Kindred, I think they have, this looks like Jabril Peppers from this wide angle, you know, all 22, we get a better look at numbers, but um, they're going to, they're going to work those guys down in the box. This turns into a pseudo four, four, you're playing eight men in the box. They feel comfortable. If you know anything about Greg Williams, you know he feels comfortable, you know, playing guys close to the line of scrimmage and, and putting trust in his athletes, and he feels better about his corners this year. So let's let's run through uh, this one. It's just going to be a quick throw. You're going to see the, the fullback is going to be there to help on Avery at the bottom of the screen. And I would imagine that they would feel the need to do this. They're, they could easily offset this fullback the opposite way. Now, obviously, you're going to put him in the risk of throwing whatever throw you want. If you know, if they're intending on throwing a quick hitch to an off-corner boundary, um, you know, your fullback on the left side could be a problem. But if you know you're struggling with Miles Garrett that much, they could offset him. But, you know, they're pro pro I'm probably reading into that a little too much too early right here. But that's okay. They're going to use him to help chip um, and slow Avery down. But just a quick hitch, nothing to note of Avery here, except for, um, you know, he's going to hold down. Like Brennan said, he's going to be responsible for holding down that edge, and he can turn up field and get after the passer quickly. Next play, we're always going to highlight him for you guys here. He's going to be there back in that joker personnel two stand-up edge players, um, you know, so the Bills are going to be in, um, you know, what looks like, certainly looks to me like 21. I think we talked about this one, Brendan. Walk me through how they teach lead draw on this play. Yeah, so the quarterback's showing pass. Um, it looks to me like the offensive line should be pass setting initially, but it, it just kind of, if, if you just roll that, yep, yep, yep. it really looks like a mess up front. Um, and the defensive line blows it up pretty quickly. It helps with Larry Ogunjobi can push your center immediately into your quarterback's lap. Yeah, I mean, that's really what blows up the play. Ogunjobi really causes that disruption initially. I really like him that, in that position. He, he can just really get in the back. See, he blows it up. He, he pushes the center 
into the backfield, disrupts the fullback's path on the lead draw. And uh, by the time LaShawn McCoy gets the ball, there's not really anywhere to run, so he tries to bounce it. And our guy, Jannard Avery, on this play is responsible for the C-gap, like I was talking about. You can yep. see with his pre-snap alignment, um, he is not lined up on the edge out here. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but he's responsible. He's lined up between the tight, tight end and the right tackle. Yep. So you can tell that he's responsible for C-gap. And then Brienne Body Calhoun, out here, he's the nickel. A lot of times in these defensive schemes, the nickel player is responsible for setting the edge. So that that is another responsibility that nickel guys have. They have to be physical at the point of attack. They have to be able to tackle in space. They're not just little shifty sh slot corners all the time. They also have to be able to tackle, and we've seen that from Body Calhoun. And uh, if you roll it, we we see that on this play. He does a great job of of uh, knifing inside, and making the tackle in the backfield, and Avery gets in on it too. Is um, I believe, but yeah, Avery yep, so does a great job of yep, yep, yep. getting a C gap. And then Avery turns a bull rush, you know, he's kind of taken by in tandem here, he turns his bull rush, um, just keeps fighting, and McCoy needs to, feels the need to bounce it. Once he feels that, you know, running back put his foot in the ground, he disengages, goes down the line, makes a play, and like you said, good point uh, by Body Calhoun making that play too off the edge. So just, just good stuff all the way around there. Um, all right, back in here, third and nine. I think this is actually the next series. Uh, no, same series. I apologize. Um, third and nine. Bills are going to run a little tight end back motion, put their tight end in the backfield out of 11 personnel. So it's split, uh, gun split stuff here. And let's roll it, see what we get. So, you know, the point of, you know, from an offensive coordinator standpoint, Brendan, you're going to you're going to probably be able to elaborate on, uh, you know, the luxury of them passing downs. Why, why would a team keep two guys in the backfield in this situation? Well, what they want to do here is they want to get LaShawn McCoy out. I mean, you can see him cheating his alignment here. I don't know if you can see my mouse again, but he's he's lined up basically right behind the right tackle. Yep. He's cheating his alignment. You can tell that he wants to get out for a pass route. I think he's about to run a flare or a wheel route out of the backfield here. And then the other uh, running back, I'm not sure exactly who that is, but but he's in pass protection. So they're going to put him. Charles Clay, the tight end, actually. Oh, it is? Okay, yeah. 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 But anyway, I mean, regardless, he's a backfield player. So the yeah. tight end, he's responsible for pass protection. He moves to the right side of the line. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what they're doing there. Um, Miles Garrett does a great job of coming off the edge, beating the left tackle with speed. And then it uh, forces McCarron up in the pocket. Larry Ogajobi beats his block and uh, gets the sack. I think that's going to be important, like, like like you said, with speed. Miles plays with speed off the edge, and, and Gennard does it as well. So both guys mm -hmm. are going to be forcing, as you know, from a quarterback's perspective, um, I never I never want to feel like I have to be pushed up into interior players who are driving the line of scrimmage back. So from what Greg Williams is probably thinking, I have two guys who can get upfield ridiculously fast in Avery and Miles Garrett. Um, I want these quarterbacks feeling the pressure to step up put your foot in the ground when the quarterback steps up and pursue as he leaves the pocket. So, I mean, this is going to be a formula we see all year. And I think this is why, you know, you and I had had some discussion on the type of defensive tackle they were looking for. They want those gap penetrating defensive tackles because at this point, I don't want a guy pitter pattering at the line of scrimmage, you know, holding down a run lane, not being able to make a play on a quarterback who disengages from the pocket. Exactly. And, and another thing with that play, if you could just go back yeah. for a second, there was a little thing at the end that I noticed. So if that initial edge pressure from Garrett wouldn't have got there, um, something I noticed was Avery actually disrupts McCoy's route with this with this wide edge rush. Yep. And that that's another way to disrupt routes. Who knows if he's coached to do that or if that was just by accident with the way that he was going so wide on his on his edge rush. But he goes really wide here. And and the way that it disrupts McCoy's route, I mean, that could have been the difference between getting off the field in a punt versus McCoy catching a flare and getting that nine yards for the first down. So I really like the way that he did that. I'm not sure if that was by design or not. I would assume that it was because of the way he went so wide. But And it could have been coincidence because McCoy was just there at the wrong time. But regardless, it was just an interesting detail on that play. Absolutely. Uh, jumping back in, we're going next series, third and five. Uh, Joker again, so you're going to see the Browns uh, or the Bills. Sorry, they go empty from ten personnel. They jump to empty. They send Lashawn McCoy out wide. Um, you know, it's a good way. Coordinators try to decipher what coverage is by motioning a back out of the backfield. Who chases him? Who bumps out? You can identify 
Um, you know, typically whether you're getting a zone or a man, the Browns send uh, Joe Schobert out wide to cover him, so they're giving a man indicator. Um, uh, let's see what they do. I would imagine they're going to drop Avery again, just like we saw earlier, right? Um, they're going to send Kendricks on side. Kendricks is known to be a pretty solid into interior rusher. Um, and then, you know, kind of walk me through what we got at the top of the screen, Brennan. Yeah, so this is a pick play. So yeah. this is pretty pretty standard call when you got um, third and five in the situation. And so they're just hoping that, that Kelvin Benjamin, it looks like he's the outside receiver. They're hoping that he can force that he can force Brienne Buddy Calhoun to go over the top. That's basically what they're hoping, but that he doesn't do a great job of setting the pick. Um, Buddy Calhoun does a great job of staying sticky on the receiver, staying attached to him in man coverage, getting underneath, and uh, you know disrupts the catch point. Um, it, it, the thing that really stood out to me on this play is they have 10 guys at the line of scrimmage, and so McCarron is anticipating pressure. He thinks that the Browns are bringing five, six guys. So when like Miles Garrett drops out at the top, you know he drops into coverage. Avery drops into coverage. They only bring three guys. They bring Ogan Joby, Kendricks, and Ogbo. So the Browns have eight guys in pass coverage, including the free safety deep. And McCarron is thinking, man, I got to get this ball out quick. So he immediately goes to the pick route at the top when really he had time to hold this ball if he wanted to. But um, this is pretty standard for quarterbacks. But oh, yeah, yeah I absolutely. And I saw people had referenced the lack of a second level here. Um, you know, give, give me, I, I have my answer and I know it's probably going to align perfectly with yours, but, um, you know, wh why are you okay with, there's no, I mean, there is a second level, but they're bringing somebody here and they're locked in man on the slot. Um, why are you okay with that here with having 10 guys near the line of scrimmage and one guy playing about 20 off at, at, at that, that halo free safety spot? Well, there is a second level because Avery and Garrett drop out and they're responsible kind of for the for the curl flat area on this play. And then you've got man across the board with the other players. So like for Peppers sure. is manned up on the tight end. It looks like the bottom, we've got man with Schobert and Ward. And then at the top, it's Terrence Mitchell and Body mm -hmm. Calhoun and man. So they've got help inside. So so pre they can... Pre-snap, why are you okay with it? Um, Pre-snap, I'm okay with it just because they're showing pressure and they've got 10 yeah. guys at the line and they're pressed, so yes. they're going to disrupt the route the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I, I, I saw you answer that. Somebody, I think somebody on Twitter had asked you that, you know, look, you know, it's a still shot and there's nobody at the second level. Well, that's okay to have nobody really at the second level if you're, you know, a pre-snap, you know, you're disguising things, but you're also getting hands-on and not allowing people to run free routes. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Let's jump Another to the thing that's one. noteworthy is Randall's, uh, if you saw yeah. Randall's, pursuit on that play man he comes down quick from that deep spot i mean that's i know he doesn't get in the play but if that ball would have been thrown a little further randall he really has great range back there clearly I agree. and he, he made a play earlier in the game too i think it was a, a slot fade from benjamin that he, he was on top of too which we didn't see last year i mean he's obviously going to be more instinctual uh football player back at that position than jabril was earlier in the year so uh we'll see a little bit of that so uh back back in uh bills are in um it looks like the Bills are in 21. It uh, looks like uh, – what, what are you seeing here from them offensively? little ice? Yeah, ISO play. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. they've got – they're blocking down across the board. Um, man blocking scheme, similar to duo. But uh, if you've heard Jake talk about duo in the past, but they've got the fullback leading for the inside linebacker to the front side. So, yeah. so uh, 42 I, I, is – Highlight, looking, highlight Christian Kirksey here. What, what, what went wrong? So explain – this play gets bounced. It's spilled back to the right by McCoy for an eight-yard gain. Um, nobody's holding down the backside edge. You talked earlier about this. Explain what the thought process has to be between Kirksey and Avery here. Who, we don't know who the, the issue is. We have a, we can surmise um, from, from afar. But, uh, yeah, talk me through your thought process when you break this down. Yeah, so they've got like a gap, gap exchange going here. So you can see that Kirksey looks like he's aligned inside, but but Avery right before the snap, like initially he lined up outside and then he, he creeps down inside into the C-gap right before the play. So he's inside the tight end again. See there, he's lined up head up on the tight end. Then right before the snap, he, he creeps inside. He's responsible for C-gap. So he, again, just like on that play where Body Calhoun had the tackle for loss, he... He's responsible for C-gap. So you would think that the, the linebacker to his side, so Kirksey, yeah. you would think that he would scrape over the top of that and play D-gap. So he should be the one responsible for setting the edge in theory. Yeah, it looks like Kirksey kind of forgets or overplays. I mean, he, it's possible that he didn't get the call. Um, 
it looks like he's trying to play the, the same responsibility that Joe Schobert is playing in this run in the run fit, mm-hmm. rather than remembering that his fit is actually outside in the D gap because there's no nickel player on this play. They have four linebackers on the field if you include Avery in that. So, so you need him to um, to set that edge, send the run back inside, maintain outside leverage, make the tackle in space. Hopefully, instead he over pursues inside, and then Joe Schobert makes you know a Provo line pa- linebacker type play to make the tackle in space and save the first down. Yep, good point. I think that's something Joe does really well: closing speed, uh, sideline to sideline mm-hmm. is a big part of his game. Anyway, he's a hell uh, of an he, athlete. You know, a hell of an athlete. Um, so jumping back in, I think this is uh, the next series out. They get a they get a third and twelve. Um, let's see what they do here. The Browns' first defense only gave up 22 yards, so you know that was a positive sign. I mean, you're playing against the Bills, who are trying to figure out who the heck they're going to be offensively, and they were led by AJ McCarron, who's a little bit of a, uh, a wreck right now, feeling comfortable. And you know, I don't know. I don't want to comment on the Bills. I had a lot of guys I talked to with Bills guys, and I, I wish them the best. I think Josh Allen probably is their best bet, which probably says something. But either way, um, you know, you're, you're looking at again. Uh, Joker, Joker sort of set up here. Um, you know, explain to me why the coverage is the way it is on this certain situation. Oh, it's third and 12. So there's going to be like a no cover zone underneath. So there's that five yards from the line of scrimmage. Everybody's going to drop off a little bit. And they're basically just hoping that McCarron's like, oh, I'll just take this short flat route. So they're hoping that they'll just, he'll be confident with just throwing something short. They can rally to the ball and make the tackle. So this is a situation where you don't really want to see the the Browns defenders pressing too much because it's third and twelve. They're dropping off. They're hoping that he throws us something underneath. Yeah, and, and I would it think looks that it looks like, like that's like, what's that yeah, happen. yeah. And it looks like Avery's wide alignment, which is pretty ridiculously yep. wide. He's taught here almost to get hands on too. He is, I, I and only, he does yeah. it. Yeah, I, I feel it's like important. they want him to absolutely, <clears throat> even though he's rushing. It is going to be delayed. His impact is going to be obviously delayed. I mean, Miles is making impact right behind McCarron, and uh, you have Avery, who's still a good three yards from his tackle. Um, but you know that, like you, like we said, getting getting. I would rather him in this situation with the with the depth at which they're playing, get hands on this number two to alleviate some of the pressure up the seam. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's third and twelve. They get they get four yards. He hustles all the time. That's something I noticed watching him the other day. He. He jumps, he gets his hands up. He's trying to knock that ball down. So yeah, this is a guy that's going to give maximum effort on every play. Yep, he's not far from the ball there, actually, at this peak. I, I'm surprised he didn't get a hand on it. Um, okay, let's keep going. So the Bills come out second and eight. This is the next series. This might be the fifth series. So he might have actually been out for a series. I think he was. Um, but 11 personnel from the Bills. They got a, a tight end here aligned in the wing. You'll see this two-point tight, tight alignment. Um, so we'll take a look here. So this is going to be more of your – what looks to me like a three four four setup. Am I right here? Where, uh, yeah, because they have two high. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looks that way. Yep. Um, so we're gonna send Avery off the edge. He's gonna defeat. What I like here is how quickly he defeats this cut block and is back pursuing Josh Allen. Oh, yeah. Now, I mean, Allen gets rid of it quick. They run a little, uh, you know, slot hitch here. They run. It looks like they're running a, a fa- or a go route, a drive route, and a, and a quick hitch by number three. I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's a quick throw, but I like how quickly he defeats that. We'll keep going quickly here. Um, yeah, it just looks like it's, I think it's just a stick concept. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, next play out, which is the fourth and two. So the Bills are going to motion. They're in, they're in 10 personnel. They're going to motion across um, this number three receiver here. They're going to motion him across. They're going to run layered outs. We used to call this, uh, actually, we called this in college for me, we called it duo. It was just a different level of layers of out routes. And, uh, Allen's three-step drop from under center must have fooled Avery. If you see Avery here, it's going to highlight him again. He comes untouched. The tackle bumps out. They completely whiff on him, but his depth is a little too deep, and he makes impact with the running back almost behind Allen. So, you know, it's it's, it's interesting. But he's he's he closing quick. Yeah, he's 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 yeah. closing quick. Um, you know, they're going to use th- this is his best skill set. Um, and they're going to use him to do it pretty frequently. I would imagine he gets 25 snaps a game doing it. You see him again off the edge here. Kind of gets a yeah. moment when, of hesitation. When, when the quarterback gets the ball out this quickly, you can't really expect the the uh, pass rushers to get there. I mean, it's pretty impressive that he came that close in the first place just with that speed off the edge. I mean, usually if a quarterback's taking a three-step drop from under center, a one-step drop from shotgun, getting the ball out quick on quick game, you usually don't anticipate the pass rush getting there. Yeah, good point. 
Um, next play here, third and 13. Uh, they're back in the same, it looks like they're in that same three, three, four, four alignment, two deep, the two high safeties. Actually, this play, when I watched it live, I had thought that the call was on Carl Nassib for some sort of horse collar tackle, but it's actually on Avery right here for hands to the face. Mm. I don't know how I missed yep. that live. I actually think I caught it on hard knocks last night, but you can see his left hand's extended into the face. Um, yep. which, you know, they're, they're going to call that pretty frequently, but he'll learn, he'll keep his hands down. I mean, to me, it's how much is he moving this guy off of his center of gravity, you know, a lumbering right tackle off his center of gravity into a quarterback's face. And you can see Allen feels it. I mean, yep. you know, as a quarterback, it's, they always talk about your blind sides where you're not looking. He's coming, you know, pretty much play side here because that looks like Allen's reading the middle of the field. But you know, you're you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel that pressure. That pressure is what he feels on third and thirteen. Could cause him to leave the pocket too early. You got a guy, Carl Nassib, who makes a play. I mean, that's just a thing of beauty. I mean, look at if you keep your hand yeah. down into his chest or neck, I mean, you're you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna Yeah. Go ahead. You know, Josh Allen is a great athlete and a much less athletic quarterback as an average athlete at quarterback would get sacked on this play by Avery just with the way that he bull rushes the the tackle back into the quarterback's lap I know that he did use his hands illegally but if that didn't happen that's kind of a fluky penalty you don't see that a ton I mean he's got to stop doing that obviously he's got to learn from it and he seems like the kind of guy that probably will from the way that everybody's been praising him mm -hmm. but uh but yeah I mean that's a hell of a pass rush he's he goes speed to power on that play so he rushes up the field and then he comes across the the offensive tackle and tries to bull rush him back into the quarterback with that momentum that he's gained with his first few steps off the line. So it's a great pass rush. And uh, Josh Allen gets out of there because of his athletic ability. But if it wasn't for that penalty, the Browns are getting off the field again on third down. So yeah. that's a great job on third and long. And like if the penalty didn't take place. For sure. For sure. Um, okay. So we're going to move to, uh, I think he gets a couple snaps here in the true four, three look. Uh, you get some at Mike, and I think some at Will. So he's he's in he's in at Mike here. We're actually gonna I'm gonna breeze through this one because I, I actually when we cut up this tape I duplicate it. So we're it's the same play. So he's in at Mike here. Looks like the Bills are gonna run some stretch outside zone. Yep. Okay, so he's he's responsible for his inside to outside here. Um, you know if if it looks so like he's got cut back. Yeah. So so what you're gonna see. Uh, I think I think Orchard or uh, Chris Smith makes this play at the top of the screen. Looks like they do a gap exchange concept here. So they're going to send. If, if you guys can see my mouse, they're going to send Chris Smith inside, and then they're going to loop this stand-up player out around. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of, a, and you see at the bottom of the screen they get Burgess. a little gap exchange too. Um, yeah, so you got Burgess who's walked into the line of scrimmage there. Yep. So Chris Smith does a nice job of still pushing out to set a quick edge and then ripping inside and making a play. I mean, if Avery, if that play gets past that first level of attack, Avery's right back. You guys can see him right here in his cutback lane to close down a gap and make a play. So, yep. uh, you know, good run defense there from, from the whole from the whole unit. Um, looks like we're jumping to second and 13. Um, this is one of Avery's better plays. I'll let you, we'll watch it and then I'll let you tell me what you think. So, uh, Joker, Joker set. It's a quick game. It's a, yeah. it's a, it looks like the quarterback's taking a one step drop here. So you can tell that the, um, the offensive line is kind of jump setting, especially the right tackle from what I noticed. So they're expecting Allen to get this ball out really quickly. Um, the pass rush, the entire pass rush kind of goes to the defensive left. They, they bring the two inside linebackers off the left side like they did earlier in the game. Yep. And and Avery does a great job of of seeing that he's getting jump set. So at the snap, reading, reading the tackle because, you know, there's a vertical set where the tackle sets wide and deep. You know, Joe Thomas was known for doing that. He did it every play. But, you know, we all know what that looks like, I believe. And or you've probably seen it. So on this play, he jumps that. So it's it's a much more quick movement. It's at the snap. It's near the line of scrimmage. And Avery does a great job of reacting to that, giving want, him that move. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the right tackle really wants to, on this sort of set, like you said, this jump set, really deliver with his hands. Yep. Um, you know, they're, they're taught to deliver with the hands because it's going to do two things. It's going to shock him quickly when he's not prepared, but it's also going to keep their hands down for like, Brendan was pointing out a quick throw. If they want to throw a hitch to the flat, they want that ball out without hands being in the air. But what I love about what Avery does here, 
He feels that punch coming. You see, you can see the right tackle's punch coming. He puts his right foot in the ground here, left arm on his shoulder pad, and boom, over the top swim move. So he's gone. Yep. He beats him like it's as exactly. quick as you can beat a guy. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. You're going foot, shoulder, swim. And then how do you beat this running back? He now, This is what's amazing to me. I mean, this kid's a fifth-round rookie. He, he's at a high point right here. To do a swim move, as you know, um, it's tough to emulate for, for people. But you have to be high. Your torso has to be high. Everything has to be high. Watch how quickly he gets underneath the running back's pad level to get around the corner. So he's boom, yeah, boom, boom, high and low. Yeah, body. the running back's actually coming over there because he saw the inside linebackers go that direction. So yep. he's trying to pick up his guys because the offensive line is responsible for the defensive line on this play. And uh, so he's going to the right, and then he has to pick up Avery just because Avery blew by the right tackle so quickly. Yep. Um, Allen, he's looking right initially. He, see, he feels that pressure, sees it, has to run to his left. And Avery almost chases him down in the end as well but it forces that check down and, uh, and a third and six, which is a very good situation for the defense. Yeah, absolutely. Great. I mean, that's just, that's just, I don't know, that's a veteran pass rusher right there. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. So he's, he's very advanced with his hands and which, with his pass rush moves. You could see that with his, with what he did at Memphis, the clips and uh, the cutups that we saw before the draft of him. Yep. And then, and then, so, and I totally agree. And it's translating really well. I mean, we're one game in here, but it is translating really well. So, uh, Bills come out. I mean, Avery's playing that, um, you know, Joker linebacker here, outside linebacker again. He's going to drop and wall off three like he did before. But the Bills just run a quick, yep, yep. They're just going to just run a quick screen. Nothing you can do from his perspective, wide side of the field. Um, Interesting call in third and six to run a quick, looks like they're just running a quick turn and, well, they were probably setting up. They were probably setting up fourth down here, right? Just trying I, to get three yards. I, th- I think. I think they ended up kicking that. this one. But yeah, if they get a few yards, it's fourth and two. They end up. You know, you mm-hmm. hope you, you would. You would maybe go for that. But they did kick that one and make okay. it. Um. Anyway, so oh, jumping they, back they in. Yeah. They did. Okay. They did. He's at will here. I think it looks like. Um. I didn't write this one down, but it looks like he's. Um. You know, to the backside of the formation strength. So. Mm. Is I think he's a Sam. Hand? Yeah, that's is the tight end. Attached okay. there. Yeah. Yeah, that is yeah. the tight end attached. My bad. So, yeah, he's a Sam. Um, just a quick hitch. But the thing I like when I watch this sort of play is how quickly he puts his foot in the ground, breaks. And if that ball's caught, say Mike Jordan, who does a nice job of jumping this route, this hitch, say he doesn't get there, I feel pretty confident that Avery's going to run that down. So, I, I like the pursuit. Like you mentioned, he plays through the whistle. It's 100 miles per hour all the time. Um, yep. I feel good about that. So yeah, um, it looks like he's responsible for curl to flat here. So yep. inside, he's gonna initially try to get in a curl window and st- in in case that outside receiver was gonna run a curl and then rally to the flat. And he has the speed to do that. I like his initial pass drop and coverage. So he's trying to get underneath number two, um, number two meaning the tight end. So the number two receiver in the pass concept. So number one would be at the top outside and then number two is the tight end. So he's trying to get underneath that route initially, um, try to get in the curl window, and then rally to the flat just like he did here. So that's textbook. Yeah, that's a great job. And hustle all the time is what I like from this guy. Yeah. So I think he does. What he'll do in coverage is he's really good. I noticed it when studying him coming out. Is He, he does a really nice job of making one cut. I worry when he has to make multiple cuts. I don't think they want to put him in that situation right now. I think they're trying to get him some snaps, but – um, when he has to cover a route that, that involves a couple different moves, I mean, any linebacker is going to struggle with that typically, but um, I think they're trying to limit that exposure as much as they can. Um, two, looks like they're running the Joker personnel again here. Uh, coming off the edge, I mean, just, you know, it's, it's how, how well can you play? How fast can you run with your pad level ridiculously low? I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah, that's a great, that's a great rush. I mean, the quarterback sets up at, uh, Let's see how many yards. Around nine yards, I think. Five, yeah, he's five stepping. Yep. Yeah, about nine yards deep, and uh, or eight. I don't know, eight and a half, whatever. And uh, and Avery forces him to move up in the pocket. I mean, Peterman really feels that, and it creates a sack for another player. Yeah, Who is that? Nice. Justin Curry that comes comes clean with the sack, but but Avery makes this play. I mean, if the quarterback could just stand back there at at his initial depth of eight to nine yards then he can just sit in the pocket and pick away at the secondary. But since Avery beats his man on the, on the rush, it creates a sack opportunity for another guy 
Uh, what's the down and distance here? It's third and six. Yeah, exactly. So this is another third down where he's he's doing something good to create an opportunity for the Browns defense to get off the field. Yep. Yeah, man, that's that's it's spot on. He's not getting this, the credit in the stat book, but he makes the play. He opens the window for other people. And uh, 100%. yep, you're going to see it again here, man. I mean, it's just when he plays against second string guys who do not get that depth, that pass set deep depth, like you were talking about earlier. You, you, you <laughs> he's going to turn that corner so quick, and he's going to be down. If you're six four six, to, to six six, like most tackles are, he's going to be down by your hip. Look how, look at where his helmet is. He's <laughs> the forward lunge to be by you. You're not going to stop him. So again, he forces him up on third and thirteen, and what happens? The formula that we've been talking about. So yep. yeah, I mean that that that's that's a lot of what we saw from Jannard Jannard Avery when I started talking to Brennan when when we get into banter about the game. Uh, he was a big player that stood out. That was one of the main talking points because we're not sure if he's going to get enough of a breakdown um, for the impact he had. I mean, I, as far as I I know, Brendan, that's uh, for a fifth round rookie getting first team reps. That's about as impactful as I could have hoped for him to be. What do you think? Oh, definitely. It was, it was a great job of getting his feet wet by the Browns coaching staff. You know, getting him in at different positions. I like that they they let him play off the ball a little bit as well as in his typical edge rushing position. I think most of what we'll see from him this year will probably be on the edge. They have a lot of linebackers that can play off the ball, like Kendricks, Collins, Schobert, Kirksey. You know, those those four guys, Burgess. I mean, they have a lot of guys that are going to play off the ball, but but Avery gives them some, something that's much different, a much different skill set, something valuable um, that kind of mitigates their their lack of depth on the defensive line right now, where you can slide him down, and he he is a quasi defensive lineman with the way that he's rushing the edge right now. I mean, he's he's basically playing like a 3-4 outside linebacker, like prototype, but 4-3, 3-4, it's pretty much all the same in modern football. It's, it's sub packages, it's can you rush the edge? Can you get an interior rush? And then certain guys drop into coverage. So that that's the question. And and this guy can clearly rush the quarterback. He can set the edge. He can he can you know maintain the C gap and hold his gap. And then he can also get hands on in coverage, drop underneath a pass route, and and hustle to wherever he needs to get. So I'm excited about him. I think uh, I think he has a bright future. We'll see how he does in the in the future weeks. I'm sure that he'll have some some uh, rookie moments where he doesn't do quite as well and he'll get picked on at times but I'm excited about what he's showing and there's a reason to be excited here for Browns fans yeah absolutely man and I think they they found I think I'll slow down I think one thing that we talked about last year was did Greg Williams use his personnel to best fit the guy's game uh, strengths and I think this is something that I feel pretty positive about there there are probably some other guys that we could pick on that they're not doing a great job using them to their strengths but in this case um, with how they're using Avery to, to what he does best. I'll agree with you 100%, man. So, Brendan, uh, thanks for joining me, man. I, I think for all of you who tune into these regularly, um, Brendan and I have had a little bit of discourse on joining me uh, once a week. I want to have him on. He gives great insight, uh, knows the game as well as anybody. Talk uh, talk to the people who, who are committed viewers here about what you're doing at Pro Football Focus. Oh, uh, thanks, man, for the kind words. And, and right now, I just started as an analyst for Pro, Pro Football Focus, so... Um, I'm analyzing games live um, and then, you know, breaking those down in extreme detail, you know, grading every player and putting in all the data and like the snap to throw and all those types of things, just recording different data points that they record. And then and then also um, doing some quarterback charting as well. So like last week, I got the Garoppolo Watson game was my assignment. So that was fun to watch those guys go at it. But but yeah, so just just the analysis and the quarterback charting for the most part right now and staying busy with coaching. I coach high school football at Avon High School for you Northeast Ohio people that you know, know programs around the area. We, uh, we have a pretty good tradition there and I'm excited to be a part of it after uh, you know, last year I was at the college level and I didn't like that quite as much. So I'm excited to go back to the high school level now and, and I'm excited to be a part of this. So this is awesome, Jake, and I appreciate you, man. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. I think um, you know, people will benefit from this sort of stuff if you if you care enough about what the Browns are doing. Um, uh, you know, other places you guys can find Brendan if you're interested in hearing his uh, his analysis coverage. He does uh, the Browns Note with Ryan Burns. Uh, they do a great job, great podcast. Um, you can find them on. I think it's just uh, the note. Is it the Browns Note at the Browns Note on Twitter? You can find them on iTunes. All of that stuff. You can talk to Brendan. He'll typically going to be really good at answering your questions if he if you come across him on Twitter at Brendan uh, Brendan Leister. 
Um, he's going to he's going to answer anything and everything you need, and he's going to give you a thorough answer. So again, um, this is this is Brown's film breakdown. Look for us coming on. Hopefully, what will be every Wednesday. Schedules get a bit chaotic. Brendan's a newly married guy. I got a new six year uh, six month old baby at home, so things can get a little chaotic. But we'll come to you once a week, guys. Brendan, again, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. All right, buddy. All right, guys. We'll see you soon.